Trojan Philly, Trojan Philly, what's up, man? USCJ here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, I hope everybody is getting ready to get up, get out, and make some things happen this morning. Listen, we got to talk about USC's big weekend. Um, they lost. They lost, man. We thought they were going to rise to the occasion. And look, man, all of us were lost in the sauce, man. We were lost in the sauce as it relates to um, usually we, we feel like the defense is going to be the weakest link, but it just so happened to be the offense. It was in reverse, and the defense really shined, man. When you look at the numbers, um, you got USC fans should be excited because I don't think one of the positions that we've ever seen stall on us is the offense. Um, the offense stalled on us. It, it kind of went south. But those are very correctable. You know why? Because I think you got one of the best offensive minds in the country, which is Lincoln Riley. You got, of course, the Heisman Trophy winner, which is Caleb Williams. So I think, you know, we should have a lot of hope right now. Um, we're going to face a team in Utah coming up this weekend that's similar to a Notre Dame. Notre Dame. And when you're talking about the interior play, defensive line, and they might possibly have maybe a little bit better of a defensive line than a team – like uh, Notre, Notre Dame, but it may be on the same level. However, I think that USC can absolutely run the table, and this is the million-dollar question that I have for you guys. Can USC run the table? I think they can. we got to take it week by week, game by game, um, and, and I think we can capitalize, seize the moment, especially coming back home. Um, I think USC just has an opportunity that they can really make this thing happen um, and when you look at it from a top 25 standpoint, you look at our last five games, USC plays those four teams that are in the top 25. Now, I want you guys to really consider something and think about something um, as it relates to some of the teams that we've already played, um, like Arizona. Arizona's not a ranked team, but Arizona could possibly be, I think, one of the hottest teams. When you look at how they play Washington State, 44 to uh, 16, no, excuse me, 44 to 6. They beat Washington State. That was very, very impressive. Um, and I think if uh, Washington, excuse me, if, if Arizona continues to trend up like that, they finish out, that's really going to help us as it a, as a relates to strength and schedule. I think Arizona, if they finish record um, undefeated from this point out, I think that could possibly send them in the top 25. USC will have a top 25 team on their record as it relates to them. Couple that with some of the teams that we're getting ready to face. But here's the thing. Look at the teams that they're getting ready to play. I want to look at some of these teams real quick. Um, I actually uh, looked it up. And look, Arizona, they played uh, Washington State, but then they, they play Oregon State. Oregon State's ranked number 12 currently right now. Um, then they play UCLA. They're ranked number 25. Then Arizona plays Colorado, and then they're going to play Utah, and then Arizona State. So Given the last part of that schedule, they play a few ranked teams. There's three teams, three teams that are ranked teams right now. They've already beat one ranked team, which was Washington State. Um, I think that Arizona, man, could really help us pad our schedule. And just you look at the players that they have, some of the transfer portal guys, whether it's Big Seal, the defensive tackle coming from Indiana. You guys already know he really wanted to come to USC, but Arizona ended up getting him. And then um, you look at some of the other guys like a uh, – uh, uh, Justin Flo came from Oregon, uh, transfer portal guy. So they got a bunch of transfer portal guys. I even see with Bear Alexander after the game playing with Arizona, uh, he was hugging his ex teammate. So they got a lot of players that a lot of people don't realize. Um, NFL style receivers, running backs, all of that. Um, I it really proved to be, um, help us as a schedule wise has a good defensive front. Um, and, of course, if we beat Utah this weekend, it will show that we can play against a team like Utah with a defensive front. But I think that, yes, there need to be some adjustments. Uh, but here's the thing. I, I noticed on Saturday um, in my video comments, man, um, we all vent. That's what we do. When, when things don't go right, we vent. But at the end of the day, we don't give up. We vent, but we don't give up. We don't give up on this team. We don't give up on these players. We don't give up on the coaching staff. Um, look, I, I believe. Um, just would like to um, would always talk about Grinch. You know, we've seen the adjustments made. Some will say, oh. but look, Grinch put out the, pro the product on the field on Saturday. The adjustments were made. And uh, look, I think the same thing will happen with Coach Lincoln Riley. And I'm going to tell you why, because among active coaches, Lincoln Riley is the one of the best coaches in the country percentage-wise. 
Um, when you look at his record, he's been to the playoffs. That's why we can't listen to the hype. And I noticed some of the comments. I said, well, look, from these, they were coming from the Oklahoma fans. A lot of them said, I told you, Jay, about Lincoln Riley. I said, well, look, I, I disagree. The reason I disagree was because it, it wasn't about Grinch this time, like you suggest. It was totally different. It was something that was unusual, and it was coming from our offense. So you got to give – you got to give him the benefit of the doubt because Lincoln Riley, any time that he's been at Oklahoma, I've never seen Lincoln Riley's offense look like the way ours looked like last Saturday um, against Notre Dame. Do you guys agree with that? I've never seen that. So that lets me know that not only do I trust and believe in Lincoln Riley as a play caller, but I trust and believe um, in our quarterback, Caleb Williams. He is the Heisman Trophy winner. Caleb you know, once he figures it out, once he wants to, he, it does, it's something that he doesn't even have to figure out. Um, the light switch just has to turn back on. Um, the offensive line, uh, I'm not even going to say the light switch because it never turned off. Caleb got it. Let me just say that. Caleb has it. He's the man. Um, and if we get some mixing matches with pieces with the offensive line, I think that USC can get, uh, look, we still have, we have Cliff Kingsbury there. We have Lincoln Riley. We have guys that can actually figure it out from the offensive side of the ball. Uh, I'm not as worried about the offense as I was with the defense. Um, and I think USC will have an opportunity. I believe they'll get it right. And in the event that they get it right, you guys are hearing it from me first. These last five games, USC can make a run um, for the college football playoff if they just have one loss on them. It's a non-conference loss. USC could still win the Pac-12 championship, um, but it's game by game. It's week by week at this point. None of us can be thinking about uh, the road ahead. We talk about it, but look, um, the media is just waiting for them to fall. So, look, let's take a look real quick at USC schedule. And real briefly, man, because I am proud, I will say this, I am definitely proud of the defense. And when you look at the numbers over the weekend, before we get into this top 25, um, and also USC's last opponents. Think about this. USC gave up a total of 251 yards. That's it to Notre Dame. We always said we want these, we want teams to be held to about 300 yards. 251 yards. Passing, 126. Uh, rushing, 125. Um, I believe Estime only had 95 yards um, total. So, hey, we accomplished that. We said that we wanted to hold them under 100 yards. And some people talked about... Um, Tackett Curtis started. Tackett turned out to be okay in this game. He actually looked good. Um, Ray John started. I mean, those two look good together. I would like to see Eric Gentry in there as well. I'd like to see Shane Lee, situational football. Um, but, you know, we get Eric Gentry as well. I want to see all these guys. And I see Mason Cobb get in there, stick his head in there. And so I think these guys, I was very impressed, highly impressed with Christian Roland Wallace. He was one of those guys I actually picked at the beginning of the season to play cornerback. He had a lot of contested plays. Um, I'm very happy with him. Um, he looked physical. Um, secondary looked pretty decent. Uh, Jalen Smith gave up one, but he was one of the most consistent guys all year long at that nickel, bot, nickel spot position. Um, and then Damani Jackson looked good. Um, play, he was playing physical. He was he was holding his own as well. We didn't see a lot of guys just getting shots on the, down the field. So I think USC has a lot to to pick up from this game, a lot to be encouraged from this game. Um, and total time of possession, we talked about control of the clock. Uh, we had it for 35 minutes and 30 seconds, 35 seconds. Um, Notre Dame had it for 90, uh, excuse me, uh, 25 minutes and 25 seconds. And it was just. It's just an unusual thing just to have Caleb Williams um, have the limited limited yardage that he had. We had 302 yards, um, passing yards, uh, 302 total. Uh, passing yards, 199. That's not like Caleb Williams. Uh, rushing yards, 103. Um, so I think USC has an opportunity. Um, we're going to move and groove. I want to take a look real quick at the last five games of the schedule. Then I want to look at the top 25. You guys can hit me and tell me if you guys agree with the top 25 right now, did they get it right? Uh, I don't even have no argument as it relates to us right now because right now I just want us to just turn on that offense that I know we can because I believe, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about um, our one-on-one -on -one matchups. Listen, man, I'm not even buying it. I believe when you look at Brandon Rice, um, sure, we see some drop balls. When you look at Brandon Rice, when you look at Michael Jackson Jr., uh, Michael Jackson the third, excuse me, um, I think we got the best receiving core in the country. Pro Football Focus even said it just a few weeks ago. They all graded out to 
85, uh, three of them graded out to 85. We had the best receiver core in the country. Um, you couple that with Dorian Singer. You look at Deuce Robinson. Let's use those guys. Jacoby Lay, all those guys. Um, whoever you have to use, if guys are making mistakes, listen, next man up. The bottom line, that's just what it needs to be, man. Um, so you guys hit me in the comments. You guys tell me what you think. I want to take a look at this real quick, this top 25 and the USC's last five on the schedule. Um, you guys already know where you can find me. It's going to be USCJ32 on Instagram, USCJ32 on Twitter. Let's take a look at this information. Jay Walker and myself, we will most likely come back. We'll do a full breakdown of this game uh, sometime this evening, hopefully, provided our schedules. Uh, so, look, I will post that on my Instagram, Twitter, um, and YouTube probably maybe a couple hours before in the event that we do that. Look, let's take a look at this information real quick. Let's go. USC's remaining schedule and I think USC really has an opportunity here um, of course you guys already know it's going to be this weekend we're playing a ranked a ranked Utah team and look USC could make a, it could make or break us man and that's the bottom line um, that Utah team they're currently ranked in the top 25 at number 14 and look we're going to face a team that's going to have a similar type of defensive line so we already know that. We know that the defense is, is good. And from all reports, it seems like Cam Rogers is not going to be in there. So we can honestly say if that's the case, um, I think we probably might have faced maybe a better offense that we faced uh, uh, we faced last weekend that we'll face this weekend. Um, however, they're going to be extremely physical on the defense in the trenches. They always are. Um, but if we beat them, that's going to be the number 14 team. Um can they win that game? I think they absolutely can. It's at home. Um, this game at Cal, the next game, excuse me on that. The next game, uh, I think that's very winnable. But Cal's not one of those teams that's going to lay down. Um, October 28th is going to be a big-time physical game. They got a running attack. Uh, Cal is not going to lay down for anybody. Uh, and then you look at the game, the big one. It's going to be Washington, man. You guys already know. Uh, they beat Oregon just a few last weekend, and I think that Washington is one of those teams, man, where they're coming home, and I believe if we get pressure on Michael Penix, I, I do believe our defense, um, when you're talking about, especially the defensive line and our, our, uh, our edge rushers, I believe that they're better um, than Oregon's. That's just my opinion, um, but I believe if we add pressure, I believe that it could be a different type of game. You guys already know, like I stated, they did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Arizona. It was only a seven-point score. You guys see how we matched up with Arizona? You see how Washington matched up? I'm not using that as a total measuring stick, but I just believe that USC has the ability. They have the potential. Um, they can turn it on um, and, and let that light switch turn on and make it be happy, man. Make it go time, only popping and only cracking. Oregon, I believe this game is going to be extremely, extremely tough, um, given the fact that um, the hostile environment. Our defense handled it well at Notre Dame. Um, how would the offense handle it is the question for me because, you know, I mean, you know, it just seems like when you start getting the noise involved, when you get the, the stadium involved, the, that factor, I believe sometimes the, the offensive line could get absolutely lost in the sauce. We've seen it at Arizona State, but I think they can do it. Um, but it's all about how do we play against Utah? How do we play against Cal? How do we play against Washington? That all will determine about the Oregon game. But I think it's very possible. But I think at this point, we need to take it game by game. They're ranked number nine right now. USC absolutely has an opportunity um, to seize the moment with that as well. Um, and then the next game after Oregon, you see it's going to be UCLA. UCLA currently just slipped into, they're in the top 25. So that's going to be our last game. They're playing extremely tough physical defense right now. Um, but I think it's at home, so USC can absolutely capitalize on this as well. All of these games, it's only five games left. We could take it week by week. All of these are very winnable. Um, one thing we don't have to worry about, we know that this guy right here, number 13, he is a Heisman Trophy winner. He does have big playability. Um, provided the offensive line could just, they do some type of mix and match piece piece uh, with this offensive line, patchwork, whatever you want to call it. I believe this guy will take off. I believe he will be locked in. Um, he's a very determined guy. He's a very competitive guy. Um, a lot of people were uh, hating on him. But look, man, just like anybody gets critiqued, he gets critiqued, everybody gets critiqued. But at the end of the day, 
uh, guys have recovered from bad games. Caleb had a bad game, um, but the coaching staff had a bad game. So you want to put it on him, you can put it on the coaching staff as well. Um, at the end of the day, I think all these guys can recover. And I think it's going to be very, very telling. This weekend, I can tell you this for sure, that this weekend will tell us how the rest of our season will go. That's pretty much how <laughs> we can determine it. If we play this weekend, if the light switch comes on, I think USC fans could be excited and, and win this game. Um, otherwise, I think yeah, it's going to be a long five games, man. So uh, let's take a look real quick at the top 25. All right, here's the top 25. I'm going to go through it real quick. Uh, you already know, like I stated before, USC dropped to number 18. But you see Georgia 1, Michigan, uh, Ohio State 3, 4 is going to be. Uh, Florida State, Washington is going to be uh, number 5, Oklahoma 6, Penn State 7, Texas 8. Oregon number nine, North, uh, North Carolina number ten, uh, which I think is kind of a joke, but it's cool. I think it's kind of a joke for Alabama as well. They got nine lives. Um, they're they're uh, number eleven. Oregon State is number twelve. Uh, Ole Miss number thirteen. Utah fourteen. Notre Dame fifteen. Um, Duke is number sixteen. Seventeen is Tennessee. 18, USC, LSU, they got nine lives as well with those two losses. They're number 19. Uh, Missouri is number 20. 21 is Louisville. Air Force, 22. Tulane, 23. 24 is Iowa. And you see there, uh, UCLA.